Okie dokie. Mm -hmm. So. Go for it. Go for it. Just do it. Start streaming. Okay. Are we live? Yes, I think we're live. We're actually starting a few minutes early again, so we can have a few minutes to chat it out. If you see me and hear me, send Anna a note. She's sitting right here. We're sorry for the delay and having to change. But um, yeah, so we, we were trying a new camera because we thought we wanted, well, we still do. We want a zoom lens so that you can see the details of what I'm working on. And we were trying this new camera. We thought this was gonna work. And okay, somehow the settings weren't set up correctly. So we set it up to our old camera and we're back. If you are watching this and you're not live, just pop ahead five minutes and then that way we're gonna start content, the real stuff about this video in a few minutes. But Anna, who's watching us? We have people watching from Chicago and from Michigan. I hope you guys are staying warm. Yes, yeah, stay warm in Michigan. And I'm Chicago. In, and Chicago, yes. We'll out there. I'm gonna be in Michigan in a month or so. Yes. yes. Anybody else? Yeah. Shout it out. <laughs> Blackpool, UK. Oh, UK. I know last time we had a, someone from Sweden and they probably had to go to bed. So <laughs> my apologies, you guys. Um, but of course, you can always watch this later. Anyone can watch this later. We have three people watching from the UK. Now. Okay, hey, three everyone. People. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Brian, turn your phone off. <laughs> okay. All we right. have somebody watching all the way from Chile, Seattle, France, New York. Wow, I love this international crowd. I do too. I think um, the cricket maker is something that is kind of going universal right now. Well, maybe not universal, but global. We'll say that global. So everyone, we have had so many questions about how we use our makers for crepe paper and for felt as well. And uh, we have more questions than that, but we thought we would tackle this set of questions today and give you guys as much information as we can share with you on our best tips and techniques. How are we doing on time here? Two more minutes? Okay, um, anybody else? Any? If anyone wants to ask a question during our live, go ahead and type capital Q or capital question and then type your question and we'll collect those. And at the end of the live, we'll go ahead and um, try and answer as many as we can. If we can't answer them all on live, then we'll go ahead and do it in message or in the comments below. But uh, we asked everybody ahead of time, what do you want to know? Like what tips and techniques, what are you looking for? And we had so many requests and questions. So we distilled it down to um, a basic handful of how, and this, this was the, the most questions were how we use the, the Cricut Maker for cutting crepe paper. So I'm gonna demo this for you guys. I'm gonna show you all of our tricks on the different ways of crepe paper. And then I'm also gonna throw in some felt and Here's another thing I just remembered. Since we were an hour late on our live, I decided last minute, we're gonna give away two books. So this is for live people watching, those of you who hung out with us and came back to our new link. We're gonna have two books that we're gonna give away. And the way that you can win those is type in the comments, um, I'm a winner. How's that? <laughs> and then Anna will um, send both of you guys, I'll sign them and we'll send two books out. Okay? Sounds and we're even going to do international, so we're going to go big. We're going to go big, so all of you, everybody, enter to win a book, okay? So let's see, here we are one minute out. Anybody else joining us? Yeah, from... we have 101 people watching us. Oh, that's pretty good, from okay. Kentucky, California to Italy, New Zealand, okay. Australia. Good. I love this. So, you know, it is my heart's desire. This is why I do this. I want people to get crafting. I feel like crafting. I was just thinking about this the other day. I'm taking a drawing class for myself just for fun. And I realized that when I'm using my hands and when I'm crafting, it puts me in a space of meditation and Zen and like in the moment, all of those things that they talk about how we can find joy and peace in our lives. So this is all part of that. Let's find some joy and peace and use this amazing tool to help us do that. So I think we're good to go. It is 12 o'clock. Are we ready? What do you think? We are ready. Okay. All right, so I'm, I have my list of notes here because I want to be a little bit more precise about how I share out this information. So we'll kind of start top to bottom. And the, one of the questions that we get a lot, and I'll just 
tell you our opinion. Now remember, everything here in this video is our opinion and it's what we have found in our studio. We have four of us who use the machine regularly, especially with these materials. And so we feel like we know the machine well for this particular product. So this is our opinion. No one's paying us to talk about this and no one's telling us what to say. Um, but the Explore Air or the Explore and the Maker, what is the difference? And it really is this um, piece right here where you can change out blades. And this is the, oh, well, actually there's a little bit more to that. Uh, the machine itself is heavier and it has a deeper cutting ability and so they set it up to to be able to manage different blades and so the materials that can be cut on the maker is much broader than you can on the explore the explore is a beautiful machine to cut vinyl iron on regular paper cardstock paper you can also cut felt and fabric although you have to have a backer because you use the fine point blade on the maker so the difference with the Maker and the Explore, in my opinion, are these extra blades. So here, here's the regular blade, and this is what you would find on the Maker, and that's just the fine point blade. It's wonderful, it cuts, the technology is amazing on how this blade cuts. The thing that changed you know, our studio and how we use it is this blade right here, and this is the rotary blade. When people ask us, can you cut crepe paper on the Explore or any of the other cutting machines out there that are not Cricuts, the answer is no, because you can only cut the crepe paper with this rotary blade. And you can see it, I don't know if you can get super close. Our lens isn't quite as, as uh, zoom as the one that we were trying for, but you can see it's just this little teeny tiny rotary. And the thing that I like about this, it's on this, this um, I don't know you would call it it's on this mechanism that slides into the machine and the only thing that you have to do to change out a blade is change out this little tiny piece and anything that's you know a little bit less waste throwing away maybe someday Cricut will stop using foam Cricut <laughs> then I, I love that I love that all that I'm replacing is this one little piece and Brian's telling me to hold it still <laughs> so you guys can see it so those of you who don't have a maker, here I'm giving you as close up as I can. Um, can is it a little blurry? A little. Okay, well we're doing the best we can. But you can go online and see these. They have whole videos and all that. Um, the other thing that's really interesting that they also offer, and we haven't gotten into this as deep as we want to. We've done used this a little bit. And this is the scoring tool. So on the other machine, the scoring tool was just a pen that drug along the paper and pressed into the paper. This one actually is a rotary scoring tool. There's a single um, score and then there's a double score and this is if you're making cardstock boxes to get those really clean corners this is brilliant and you just unscrew them and replace them so that's the other thing the third blade that they offer and I don't have it here with me is the knife blade and that's where you will want to um, do really deep cuts with your heavier uh, chipboards and things like that we haven't explored that blade as much as we are planning to so when we get that down and when we know those um, techniques and tips and tricks we'll definitely share those with you so this is the ones that I really want to talk about is the rotary Okay, then I wanted to show you guys our essential tools that we use. And again, this is mostly for these materials I'm talking about today. But I always feel like you, you need one of these. This is the spatula tool, and it's just always good to have one on hand. This one I don't necessarily use quite so much for crepe paper unless I have a little teeny tiny piece on the mat that I want to pull off and I can't get it off. I might just kind of stab it and pull it off that way. So those two tools are essentials. And then you really have to have this tool. They have a broader version as well that I love. I don't have it here with me, but I'll show you why I use this tool a lot. And then tools that we use that are actually Leah Griffith tools. This is more for making your flowers. So this is my curling tool. And the difference between you know this one and this one is this has a ridge for scoring. So it's a little bit different. This one I use for my curling my petals. And then this is our brayer tool. You might have your own. This is There's nothing special. It's just a brayer tool, but it's a pretty color. And I'll show you how I use that for crepe paper. And then I have my scissors. So those are our tools. Okay, let's see. So, da -da -da, blades, tools, got down there. Okay, so I'm going to walk through using Design Space because this is something that a lot of people ask us 
And when we um, upload our files for crepe paper, it's a little bit different. And we try our best to explain. And of course, we will we'll have a video someday. So we're gonna try this without having our super zoom. And you guys are gonna tell me, you guys are gonna tell me if you can see my screen or if it's getting some glare. We're good. Are we good? Okay, so I'm on our site here and I'm going to show you. I have to do it a little bit upside down, so see if we can do this. Uh, uh, where's my, okay. I'm gonna show you how, I have to turn around, sorry. <laughs> I have to get my bearings here. Okay, there we go. Um, so I have here, this is our post on the rosemary. Can you see that? I have to turn it just a bit so I can see it. And those of you who are members know, you just scroll down to the bottom of the story where we, you know, we have our instructions, different photographs, and then at the bottom, we have these little bars, and this is where you download. And I'm going to download, I don't have my glasses, they're on my head, yes, I know. I'm gonna <laughs> download the SVG. So I click on that, and a little window will pop open. Can you guys see it? Is it okay, there's no glare? Are we good? Okay, so a little window is going to pop open, and this is a Mac, it might be different on a PC. And it's asking me if I want it to open, because it will automatically open a zip file. These are always zip. We have to put them in a zip file to put them on WordPress, so sometimes we get the question like, I don't know what to do with a zip file. Well, when I click on it, it asks me if it wants it open automatically. If it doesn't do that for you, all you have to do, drop it on your desktop and double click it and it will open up like that. So that's all you need to do. I'm gonna say okay, and it opens up and it's showing it to me right there. And you can see it, and there's my zip file. I have to see what number, I've done this a few times. So okay, then that's all I do. Now I need to know where it is. I know that it's in my download file. I'm going to go over to my design space and I'm gonna say new. So I'm clicking the new, the plus button in design space. Sorry, I have to turn this around. I wish we had another camera. We're gonna figure this out and be able to have more than one camera. And then I'll click upload. Okay, so images, click the button there. It will say drag, drop, or browse. I'll go ahead and browse. And then, I guess I could put my glasses on. That's what it's there for, right? Okay, so I'm going to downloads and then I'm going to find this zip file. I have a lot of downloads, you guys, so I have to kind of spin through them. And that would be the Rosemary. It's not always in order. Let's see. Okay, Crepe Paper Rosemary, here we are. And that is not the right one. Here we go. All right, Crepe Paper Rosemary, I'm gonna say open and it comes into the window like this. So I will, uh, it's giving me a little cookie warning. I'm gonna close the cookie warning and say save. Can you see enough? Oh, it's kind of hard to see. I know, I really wish I had two cameras on this. Okay, so I put it into save. Here's the image library, and this is everything I've uploaded recently. So I'm gonna click on that and then insert image. And there it is. So this is the trick that we really want to share. There's a couple things. We set up the SVG cut files for you so that when they come, in, they come into design space, they are in the right direction for the creping of the paper, which I'll talk about in a minute. So just know you do not want to rotate these. Don't rotate your SVG cut files that come off of our site. But what you will want to do, you can move this up if you want to, it really doesn't matter. This is, this is your um, working space if you're working to design things in design space, but if, if you're just dropping something in, it doesn't matter. Okay, so we have this whole disclaimer and sort of a you know best practice and some notes, which we, we really find it works best if we put notes on our SVG cut files because it helps people who maybe don't understand quite as well. But all you have to do over here is just click on the eye and that will make it disappear because you don't want that, you don't want to cut that. So definitely do that. Then you hit make. Actually, I forgot to, um, sorry about this. We might have to go back and forgot the step. So we're gonna select these two layers. So all I have to do is just select the top one 
and I'm going to attach them. You want to attach them because they're actually two pieces together and the way that it's set up, you'll want, you know, you'll want to attach that. And I think it said that on the notes, I didn't read them. Um, then it's all set up and ready. If you want to add more than one of these cuts, you can go ahead and say one, two, three, and they will line up. That's what we would do if we were making this plant, which by the way, this is the rosemary plant. And uh, you can see it's a lot of detail. And I'm gonna talk about that in a second when it's cutting, because I'm gonna want to get this going here in a sec. All right, so that's ready to go. I'm gonna hit continue. Oh and turn on my machine. <laughs> That's always a good one. All right, so it's selected my maker. Give it just a second. Okay, set materials. So today what I'm going to do, I'm gonna set this aside because now we're gonna work on the actual mat. So I'll set this aside and get it ready to cut. I need some space. <laughs> Okay, so for the, this is the double-sided crepe paper. We have three different weights of crepe paper and I'm gonna cut this on double-sided. So for the double-sided crepe paper, we have found that the best mat is the fabric mat. We've used all different mats. You know, it kind of depends. Mats aren't always the same stickiness because obviously they lose stick after a while. So, you know, you can say in general, the fabric mat is the best, however, Sometimes you can use other mats as well. Um, the one thing I will say about the fabric mat that I really appreciate, it is thicker, so it's set up for the rotary blade um, when it presses down, so it holds it better. I'm gonna put this in while we're waiting as well. Uh, I need an assistant. Longer arms. <laughs> I know, or longer arms. Okay, there we go. Um, so this has a little bit hanging off. I'm going to place, this is a 10 inch long uh, crepe paper, and it's really important that you always put your crepe paper on your mat so that your grain lines go up and down. And I'll show you that on all three of the crepe papers. So I'll place that on my mat, and I'm gonna trim the edge. This is a brand new mat. Now this is a question that we've been getting a lot of, and that is how do you ensure and stick your paper on your mat? I don't have any sticky here, so this is perfect, because I'll show you what we do. The first thing we do, now this is the top of the mat, so I have it upside down. I'm gonna run it through the machine, this, this side first. So the first thing we do is either use the brayer, and you'll wanna press this down, and the double-sided this is perfect for, because it doesn't crush the crepe paper. So you can do that. Now, this is a pretty sticky mat, so that could be plenty to do that. Another method, if you don't have a brayer, just take this tool and you just scrape and push. Just press it down. You do want it to be stuck on there fairly well. However, since it's not pulling the paper, it's rolling over it, it doesn't always have to be quite that stuck. So I have this little piece here. I could just cut it off, but here's one of our tricks that we use, and I'll show you on the other crepe papers as well. Scotch tape, yes, that is our friend. So I just take a strip of scotch tape, and if I have a less sticky mat, this is also a trick, and I'll just tape that on the edge. We found when we were cutting, um, I think it was 85 sets of three flowers for one of our events, and we had to go through a lot of cutting and a lot of mats. After a while, they would become less and less sticky, so this was a trick that we figured out. So that's ready to go. And again, since we are cutting at the top of the page, we want to put this in first. So I'm going to ask Anna, is there any questions about what I just showed everyone? Uh, no questions yet. Okay, so right now um, I'm going to change the material. If you guys can see this, I'm going to browse all materials. And if you go down here, you'll find crepe paper. I will tell you, so the material choices, this has changed. We've changed what we say uh, to use. Sometimes we'll say use heavy cotton or light cotton. And the reason why is because the software is software and it gets updated all the time. And at one point it may have been that the cotton was the best setting, but now somehow the software is updated so the crepe paper actually works really nicely. Does that make sense? Okay, I have to find the crepe paper. I have to turn it around here. 
Whew. It's a lovely day. I hope everyone's staying warm. I don't know if there's a polar, um, what is it called? A vortex, vortex everywhere. We, we don't have it here yet. Let's see. You can also type it into the search. We do have a few questions on how you keep your math sticky. Yes, um, that is a good question because you really can't. I mean, maths are, uh, they're kind of a consumable where you, you go through them and um, I would say the best technique for keeping your mat sticky is keep it as clean as possible. You'll want to replace the plastic in between and also never scrape the sticky. You never want to put any sort of blade or anything on that sticky. I'll show you how to get things off here in a second. That will help. Okay, so I have on the crepe paper and um, for the double sided, we actually use more pressure. So it's always set on default, so we're going to say more pressure. And then we're going to slide this right into the machine and we're going to get that going. And I'm going to let you guys watch some of this cut. Hopefully it's not too noisy. Can you hear me while it's cutting is a question. I'm going to move this. Okay, this is a pretty complicated cut, so it might take a few minutes. Um, we have a lot of detail. One of the questions that I'm going to talk about while you guys are watching that, uh, somebody asked us, and I thought this was really valid, they said, why would I want to use a Cricut Maker which automates everything when I'm making handmade flowers? I don't want it to feel like it's you know, a factory made flower. And I think that's a really valid point. And I will be honest, we use the, we use the Cricut Maker a lot for our crepe paper flowers. Can you guys hear me? Is this, let's make sure the sound is good. I can stand up too and get closer to the mic. Would that be helpful? Okay. So can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Okay. So um, the truth is, is that in the studio, we will hand cut crepe paper often, especially if it's the heavier crepe paper. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in detail when we get to the heavy crepe paper. Because oftentimes when you stack crepe paper, you can cut three or four at a time and the detail may not be that great. It may be more of an oval or a shape that's very simple to cut. So you really, you know, putting it on the, the cutting machine and cutting one at a time may not be the most time effective. But there are other times, like this rosemary that we're cutting right now, where it is so complicated and detailed that to sit and cut that for hours and hours just is not really where you should be spending your time. You might want to use your time more for finishing the flower or styling the flower or, you know, adding that creativity elsewhere, maybe adding color. So that would be our answer to that. You know, I always feel like when you're making crepe paper flowers, there is um, sort of a, a, a ability to connect with your work when you do hand cut. So start there, absolutely. And then when you get going and you feel like you want to make more, if you're doing a wedding or have you know this big project coming up, then the crepe, the the maker is a perfect tool. I think it's a great tool for that sort of thing. So you guys can see the little tiny details of how the blade will rotate around and cut this material. Brian, did you have any comments? Oh, okay. <laughs> Anything come through question-wise? And I know I'm taking a few questions ahead of time just because we're sitting here watching this cut. Yeah, we're getting some feedback on that it's hard to hear what you're saying when the camera's on the machine. Okay, has everybody seen enough of the cutting? Should we go back to my face? Mm -hmm. And I can, I can repeat what I just said too if, we, if you would like me to do that. And um, one of the questions that came through was, uh, did you say that you selected a crepe paper setting and did you select anything on pressure? Yes, okay. I did select crepe paper um, and I, I had mentioned before and I'll say it one more time that sometimes settings will change because it is software and they update the software. So I would say three months ago we were saying use heavy cotton or use a cotton setting for the crepe paper, but they've adjusted their settings, so now crepe paper does work. When we're cutting the double-sided crepe paper, I do, I don't, I don't leave it on desult, uh, d default. Sorry, I actually set it onto a deeper cut. 
Yes. So more, so more pressure, absolutely. And that differs between the different crepe papers. Are you guys done watching the machine run for now? Anybody, anybody? <laughs> it's, it's very mesmerizing. <laughs> I did have a question. Uh, people are wondering, how do you know when to get a new blade? So, you know, it's really hard to answer that question specifically. Getting a new blade, you'll know when it stops cutting. I mean, if, you, if you're not seeing the pressure that you usually use working and things are just not quite cutting all the way through and you can adjust your settings to help it cut all the way through, then it's time to get a blade. It, you know, it depends on the material you're using. Some materials dull the blades quicker. It depends on um, how many times you use it. So I would just say when it when you start seeing breaks in your cut would be an answer. Um, I did. Uh, we do have a question. Also, do you use the same amount of pressure for double sided crepe paper as you would on the extra fine crepe? No, and I'm going to go through all the crepe papers here in a second. But I think we've had enough. I'm going to stop and have it roll out. So I think we'll we'll just go ahead and pull this off. Okay, I've never I've never really stopped my cutting in the middle, so I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. <laughs> okay, I'll do it on the machine. Yes, cancel cut. Okay, if you want to cancel a cut, do it on your laptop, not or on your computer. It might take a second, or else just turn it off. <laughs> oh, come on. The, I promise you guys, the other cuts that I do are really quick. It's just not stopping. Okay, if all else fails, turn it off, right? Okay, I'll turn it back on so I can roll it out properly. Okay, don't do that at home. <laughs> all right, so here we are. I'm gonna move the computer again, and I wanna show you how to pull it off the mat. Um, this is the easiest crepe paper to cut with the Cricut Maker because it's, it doesn't have quite as much stretch and it's a lot, it's a lot um, uh, thinner. It's very tight. So the best way to get things off a mat always, no matter what you're cutting, is to roll the mat and you can see how it's starting to pop off. Then, I'm going to pull the tape off first. Then, for the crepe paper itself, something you want to keep in mind, let's pull the tape off or cut it off either way. It doesn't want to pull off. Okay, so you want to keep in mind is you'll always want to pull it in the direction of the crepe and not against the the creping. Because you, whoops. Okay, it, the tape's stuck. We're all human, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, I'll just do it that way. So it comes off pretty easily, and we have a lot more crepe paper there we can use. Then we have this piece. And the thing that I love about this pattern is that you're cutting two pieces at once. This is also very, very thin, so I'm gonna rotate it. And then just kind of gently, gently, sticky mat, brand new mat. I'll just gently peel it off. But I'm peeling it off in the direction of the crepe, not this way. If you go this way, it will stretch it out. Those are, yeah, there we go. Okay. And then you can see here, we have some extra bits and pieces. Usually on the fabric mat, you, you can just leave them there. You don't wanna scrape them off. Um, if you do scrape any of it off, you have to be really careful because you don't wanna take the glue off. So there's that. And then these pieces will actually pop apart. So that's how you do the double-sided crepe paper. Now the extra fine crepe paper, is the next one I'll show. And that one, I actually just used a standard grip mat, and this is a brand new mat as well. I probably could use a lot less of a sticky mat. I'm gonna let you cut that because I pulled it off early. Uh, so same thing, I put it down, and the extra fine crepe paper is really thin, and it doesn't have a lot of crepe to it. So 
I can just use this tool again and just press it down onto my mat or I can use this brayer, which I've already done, and get it ready that way. Then I've already picked out a piece to cut. So I'll bring this around. There's a lot of noise, huh? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and change this project out. And I will go, I've already saved it in my project. So you could upload it if you're uploading it, but I've already saved it in my projects. And I'm going to do a few of these little sweet pea petals. And this is a fun one to use for your Cricut Maker. This is a, a project that will be on our site on Monday. I believe, is that right? Mm -hmm. This is a Monday project. And they're so delicate and tiny. Megan made these and she actually did cut all of these out on the Cricut Maker. Okay, so here they are on the mat. I'm only gonna do the pink. And I probably don't want all, well, I'll just go ahead and do them. So I'm gonna do the pink. If I were doing multiple flowers, I would go ahead and say plus and add, you know, fill up my page, but we're just gonna cut a few. Click continue and I'll go through this slower so you guys can see it again. I'll choose crepe paper again. On this one, I will leave it on default because it's a lot lighter. We will, let's see, it's ready for me over here. And run that through. Click the Cricut button. This is a much less detailed cut, but the pieces are tiny, which I wanted to show you this while it's cutting. So I'm, I'm working on this flower. I'm, um, this will be in a couple weeks. I was working on it yesterday. And this is the Narcissus. It's a, very, it's a little bit more of a multi-petal Narcissus flower. And can you hear me? I'll stand up again. <laughs> so I cut all of these on the Cricut Maker because they're so tiny. I don't think this would have been fun to sit there for hours and cut them. And because they are so tiny, I wanted my pieces to be pretty precise. So in this case, this is where the Cricut Maker comes in really handy. And I feel as though because everything else is so handmade and curled and colored by hand that it doesn't take away from that handmade look to use the Cricut Maker for this case. So, all right, here we are. We can look at how it's cutting the same way, more or less. We just have the four petals, so it's 80% done, plus we have one small piece. Now this one I didn't tape. We did. I mean, I, I didn't need to tape it because it was pretty sticky. But if you're using a mat that had less stick, you could probably make it work just fine by using the brayer or the scraper tool and then the tape. So I would use tape on all of crepe paper if you need it. It's just one of those things you have to um, kind of assess for yourself. You just don't want the crepe paper moving while it's cutting because that will totally ruin your whole flower. All right, same thing. I'm just gonna curl my mat, gently pull it off. I'm pulling off with the grain, not against the grain so that I can reuse this crepe paper and it's not going to ruin it. And then they just pop off. You can get your little tool, one of the two in here. Like this one would be a perfect tool just to sort of get under there without ruining the surface of the mat. I'm not, I'm hardly touching the mat and pulling those off. And I have, I have not stretched anything while I'm pulling these off. That was another question that somebody actually um, asked us the other day and that is, do you stretch the paper before you put it on the mat? And in most cases, I would say, no, you don't. You don't want to stretch the paper. However, there may be a flower or two that we design that this, the paper is stretched before you cut it out. Although most of the time we do those by hand. Okay, so there is the extra pine. Now let's go to the heavy crepe paper. This one is the trickiest, I will not lie, um, because this is a brand new mat. This mat, I actually am using the strong grip for this case. Um, you really do want as much stick as you can if you're doing the heavier crepe paper. As you, you can even see how it's not. This is strong grip, but it comes off pretty easy. When I'm cutting the heavy crepe per, paper, I would probably almost always tape it. Um, you, you can decide. You don't have to tape it all the way down. You can just tape corners, which I think I'll do. So I'm just going to tape each of the corners here just to make sure it doesn't pull up. And it's really important before you cut that you make sure either you use your brayer and just press it down 
or you use your scraping tool. And our crepe paper isn't so thick, our creping's fairly tight, that it doesn't crush the crepe paper, and that's important because you don't want to crush it. Okay, so that's ready to go. And I have one petal to cut, so this won't take very long. Uh, and we have a question on what kind of uh, mat you're using for this. So this mat, I've actually used the Strong Grip. Um, I, would, I would say we've cut them on all mats, but you do want as much stick as possible. And if you don't have stick, use the tape. Sometimes at, you know, at one point we were finishing cutting all 85 of those heavy crepe paper flowers, we were taping all sides because we just didn't need it to move. As long as it doesn't move because the blade is pressing down, it's not necessarily scraping it, it will stay into place. But we've seen if it's not stuck enough, it can shift it. And that's what you don't want to happen. Okay, let's see, going back to this. I don't want to save this. Yes, okay. Then, let's see. Okay, so I have one petal I'm gonna make here. Um, <clears throat> so this is heavier crepe paper you'll want to have your setting. I'm still using the crepe paper setting because it seems to work pretty well. We'll see if it works today, right? And then I am using more pressure, okay? Same thing, pretty easy. We're gonna put it through. And click the Cricut button. And if you see your machine Take the crepe paper and things start to shift. Stop and I, <laughs> stop your machine and pull it out and tape it down. But you can see how beautifully this is cutting. This is this is a, a shape that does have some formation, and because it's a rotary blade, it has to kind of keep going up and down to get the the curves. Okay, says it's cut. We'll pull that out. Move my laptop. This is the first live I've done with a laptop. <laughs> okay, so these are easy enough to pull off the tape. It's always a tricky thing to have that tape on there because it sticks. Same thing, you, I, I always advise roll the mat and then pull it in the direction of the crepe itself. Now, remember I told you to go to the thicker, um, the non-default, well, it didn't cut all the way through, so I'd have to go back and cut that. I would say, this changes all the time. You know, a week ago this worked, now it doesn't, so you might wanna test it. Should we cut it again? Let's try it again. I'm gonna turn it over. Sometimes things happen, and you, you really need to give yourself the space that if it doesn't work first time around, it's okay. Just make sure that you test it if you're not sure so that you're not in the middle of a cut and you don't want to ruin a whole sheet of crepe paper. So I've just taped that one edge because we're only cutting that one edge. And if you just stick it through, it will cut one more time. Although I do need to change my settings, so let's stop that. Um, let's go back to our settings. So in this case, I'm going to, I'm thinking here. So what we would have done before using crepe paper all the time, um, when the crepe paper wasn't cutting all the way through, is we would have used like a fabric setting. And in this case, just to be safe, I'm gonna use denim. I could probably use a medium fabric like cotton, but I don't wanna cut again. So I'll use denim. I'm gonna leave it on default. I'm not gonna do an extra pressure. And that should, let's see if it works. I wish there was one constant answer that always was true, but there's so many variables when you're cutting different materials and how the software changes that you don't always know. 
Okay, let's get that cutting. And while that is cutting, is there any questions that anyone has about heavy crepe paper? And we have some questions on where to purchase it, so we'll add links. <laughs> okay, so as far as purchasing any of these three pieces, uh, types of crepe paper, uh, Anna's gonna add links below. Um, I'll show you, let's, let's flip this over here. So this is the petal of the flower that we're making. Uh, we're cutting these inside petals right now. So this is the heavy crepe paper. And I usually use heavy crepe paper for flowers that need more shape. Uh, the texture of the flower itself, like a sunflower, we use the heavy crepe paper because it has that sort of beefier petal and you want that weight. Um, the extra fine crepe paper, these little small flowers are extra fine crepe paper. These are extra fine crepe paper. So you can see it's much more delicate. It's almost see-through. Uh, th these leaves right here, actually the double-sided, this is double-sided. So double-sided is, I love double-sided. We also use double-sided for a lot of our flowers. I don't have any here on the table. we we'll just go through our site and, and flip around. Okay, this cut. <laughs> Yay! All right, so take my paper off. Same thing. We'll save this. And here is our petal. Now that may have cut through a bit much. So testing is always a good idea. I can see that it cut into the mat, so next time I would use just a cotton setting. Um, again, there's no always the right answer. You have to test a bit. Okay, so we have crepe paper done, and the last thing I wanted to go over with you guys is our, our second favorite material. Paper is always the first, but our second favorite material is felt. And even though you can cut felt on uh, the other cutting machines and it does pretty well although you have to have a bit of a backer it's probably the best machine to cut felt is the maker again because of the rotary so i've put some pink felt here i've already you know braided it down in this case i don't want to scrape it because it's a it's a, a, a fiber and i don't want to scrape any fiber off so i'm going to use my brayer and if the mat's not sticky enough, go ahead and tape on the edges, but I am using a fabric mat. And this is not a new fabric mat. We've used this one quite a bit, so you can see that it actually is working quite well. And I have one little piece I want to cut out, and while it's cutting, I'll show you some felt projects. Okay, I'm gonna put in I have here a felt cactus. And even though I'm cutting pink, let's see, let's go back. I'm gonna go back for just a second. No, let's customize. I don't wanna cut all of them, so I'm going to go ahead and hide some of these. So we're not sitting here for a long time. So, okay, I, I have pink, but I'm cutting a green piece, but that's okay, you guys get it. Can make a fun cactus and then there is a setting for felt and i would definitely go for the felt on the setting and always to be careful i'm going to add more pressure okay so that's ready to go actually i probably should not put that back here because this is coming through and we have been making a lot of very detailed uh, felt projects with small tiny cuts and we absolutely love the maker for that okay i'll set it right here so here's a few this is what i'm cutting right now i know sorry <laughs> i'm making you flip back and forth so cutting this again you know you can cut this by hand it will take a lot longer um it's so clean and beautiful to cut it with the machine oh wants me to push that button Okay, here we go. So in all of these cases, I've used the rotary blade, and depending on the material you choose, it will direct you on what blade to put in. Oh, okay, hold on. So here, this is interesting. I'm not the one who does a lot of felt projects in our studio. Um, we have, you know, Meg Megan does a lot of uh, felt projects as well as Krista. So what I just noted was that the felt setting wants you to use the fine point blade but i don't want to use the fine point blade i want to actually use the rotary blade so i'm going to change my setting
So it asked me, do I want a rotary blade? Yes, I want a rotary blade. Install rotary blade, it's already done. And then I'll press. So just a few little things that might come up. We always use rotary blades uh, when cutting felt in our studio. We have a couple of questions yes. on the felt. Uh, do you have to back the felt when you use the maker? No. Okay, there's the difference. So if you use the fine point blade, um, oftentimes it will ask you to back the felt because it's, it's pulling the blade on the fiber, so it will either stretch it, pull it off the mat, or kind of misshape it. With the rotary blade, since it's pressing down, it doesn't. And that would be the same with fabric as well. So you can see, this is um, another one that we cut with the rotary blade on the Cricut Maker with these beautiful details. And it is just crisp and clean. So no backing, no backing needed. That's why we like the rotary blade. So even if, if you do felt and it says you know, put your other blade in, just overwrite it and ask it to do rotary. And so. we also have a question on where do you buy your felt? Yes, <laughs> we actually buy our site from, um, we actually buy our felt from a site called Benzi Design. We'll put a link for you guys below. She has a beautiful array of colors. Uh, you can get them by the sheet. And uh, you can see here, we made this little guy as well. Uh, different color palettes. Uh, it's, it's a wool blend felt, that's the big difference. We really never do use a synthetic felt or a fully synthetic felt. This is a wool blend, so it has at least, I think, 20% wool mixed in with the synthetic fiber, which also makes it so much more touchable and yummy. That's, we always, always, always use wool blend or wool. Wools are really expensive, so this is great for if you're making toys or things for kids, although I know some people like to only do wool for their kids because of the toxicity, and I think that's really smart too. So it's almost done. What do we have here? Sometimes you can go in and test and make sure it's cutting through and it is. That looks good. All right, I am, we're gonna finish this cutting so that we can see how it looks and I'll show you how to take it off the mat. But in the meantime, are there any questions? Yes, so if you're not using the scraper, how do you clean your mat? Uh, so I will use the scrapers to get paper off my mat. If you're using, um, if you're using, and, and but very, very lightly, like you do not want to dig in there and scrape any of the glue off. If you're using a mat with fiber, like the uh, fabric grip mat with felt or fabric, you don't scrape it, you just leave it there and you just let it keep building up. I know that sounds crazy, but you just don't scrape it off because it will take the, the sticky off. So here, here's this piece here where I showed you guys before. Yes, this could have been cut a little deeper, so I'm just gonna pop it out. Any other questions, Anna? Yes, um, how do you override a fine point blade? Um, it had a window pop up for me and it said choose different blade and so I just chose the different blade. If it hadn't have done that, I would have gone back and chosen a fabric, like a cotton fabric, uh, and that would have worked. So you can see how we cut one piece and it actually pops out to two and then that's how we make our rosemary. So more questions. Can you guys hear me? Do I need to stand up? <laughs> Get closer to the mic. <laughs> More questions? Uh, not right now. Okay, no more questions. <laughs> so here it is, we're almost done. 100% uh, yes. Uh, you can see on your screen, it kind of tells you how, what percentage you've cut. It says 100% here. That one didn't get the memo. Okay, there we are. Okay, here is our pink cactus. Again, I'm gonna rotate, roll it, although it doesn't work quite as well. And then you just kind of peel it off. This uh, felt, because it is a wool blend, it's not very stretchy. And you can see how well loved this mat is. It's been used quite a bit. But again, we don't, we don't really put a scraper tool on it. I might take a little, um, this little tool and pop these off. But other than that, we really don't. And then I will just pull it off this way. And there you go. Look how beautiful that is. All right. 
So that is all I had for you guys here today. Unless you have more questions, go ahead and ask them. Um, we will answer them in comments if we don't, you know, have time in the next 20 seconds <laughs> to do them right now. So here we are. This is how we use our Cricut Maker to use our to uh, with our crepe paper, all three weights of crepe paper and felt, and we we seriously use it every day. It's become part of our making process that speeds things up for us so that we can get more projects done and out for you guys so that you can uh, kind of get the addiction of making crepe paper flowers just like we have. <laughs> it's a good addiction though, don't you think? So anyhow, thank you for being here and we will see you next time. If we get enough comments and if we get enough interest, we'll go ahead and do um, another live video where we show you how to use the knife tool when we have all the best tips and tricks ready for that. Okay. All right. We'll see you next time and talk to you later. Bye-bye.